Hi guys, welcome to week five, our final bite size nutrition and combo coaches corner wrap up chat. We're going to go through a few um, next steps for after the challenge, how you can continue these awesome habits that you have started through these six weeks. So a few things we're going to go through today. First and foremost, we're going to go over some key takeaways from our nutrition and coaches corner chats. Then we're going to take a little dive into maintaining new habits and why it's so freaking hard. Um, and then from there, we're going to take a little step back and get just a big overview, just take some perspective and then dive into actionable next steps um, that you guys can take moving forward. So <clears throat> to wrap up our nutrition chats, so the first and foremost with our nutrition is we want to make it about you. This has to be, your nutrition plan has to be something that you can go through and it fits your schedule, it fits your goals, and it makes you feel really good. Everybody um, has different reactions to different foods, has different schedules, has different goals, whether it's weight gain, weight loss, performance, things like that. So at the end of the day, your personal is incredible. Um, your nutrition is incredibly personal and it has to be about you. So then with that, we want to prioritize whole foods. Our whole foods are high octane fuel. And this is what's going to fuel our really high performance, whether it's in or out of the gym. So with that, you know, whole grains, fruits, vegetables, and lots of lean protein is where we want to have our focus as well as good healthy fats from nuts, avocados, whole food sources. And then we want to minimize processed foods and added sugars. Now, if you're going through a weight gain phase, you know you've got a little more leeway. Um, we talked, chatted about that a little bit in our week three nutrition chat. So check that out if you're interested. But on the whole, we want to have whole foods. Then we want to have an even spread throughout our days. So we want to eat every two to three hours. This is going to help us maintain a nice even blood sugar, keep our energy constant so we're not spiking and crashing every time we eat. Then as far as making healthy food taste really good, we've got our awesome formula. Our flavor is going to be salt, acid, how we're cooking that food, and then some fat. So in every single dish you make, you know, try to have something that's salty, whether it's just well salting your food, or maybe you're playing around um, with like pickles or anchovies, things like that, that have a lot of salt, even like salty cheeses like Parmesan. Then you want some acid, whether it's vinegar, orange juice, lime juice, lemon juice, then how you cook that food, you know, are we roasting, are we boiling, are we sauteing, and then having some fat. That fat is going to definitely depend on what your goals are, but that's going to help kind of tie all of the other components together and make them all shine in different lights to make a really, really tasty dish. Then finally, we want to aim to sustain. Again, this ties right back into make it about you. You want something you can be consistent with day in and day out for more than a month. So that's going to look different for everyone, and it's going to take some trial and error, but just be patient. You'll find that pattern of what works for you. All right, Coach's Corner wrap up, staying on that nutrition train just a little bit. We want to try to minimize our alcohol consumption. We all know alcohol has extra calories that maybe we don't need, um, and it also has some really negative effects as far as impairing sleep with getting hung over. I don't think anyone enjoys that. Um, and the biggest thing here is finding, you know, we're not going to go cold Turkey. You know, everyone, if you're at Christmas and there's champagne, have champagne. Um, but maybe just not having a drink every single night, limiting, limiting it to one or two times a week and really just being mindful of how does it affect you and how do you feel after, and then modify how much alcohol you're consuming based on that. Next up, work plus rest equals success. This is huge for us here at Exos. You can only push as hard as you can recover. So we got to recharge our batteries. How are we going to do that? If you're working out a ton, a ton, a ton, even just day in and day out, sitting at desks, our necks can get super tight, shoulders up. So we want to make sure we are taking care of our body by doing a lot of soft tissue work. So that's going to be in the form of stretching massage, whether you can get a consistent massage. That would be awesome. I, I think everyone wishes they could get a massage on a consistent basis, but even just doing soft tissue work and massaging for yourself, whether you have a trigger point gun, softballs, lacrosse balls, things like that, 
um, you want to make sure and incorporate that in at least once to twice a week. Hydrotherapy, if you can, I mean, Pacific Ocean out here in San Diego is pretty chilly right now. So maybe go in and take in a little dip in there on some off days, get some cold shot going. And then we want to work on some yellow zone, which is our low intensity ESD. This is going to help just get our blood moving, help clear a lot of metabolites that might build up in our muscles from workout stiffness, things like that. Next up, we want to sleep seven to nine hours every single night. And so this is just personal. Um, everyone's circadian rhythm is a little bit different. Some people are more morning people. Some people are more night people, but no matter what we want to shoot for seven to nine hours at whatever point that is for you and your schedule. So really making sure that we take our phones, our computers, things that, and get us excited and sort of make us more alert. We want to put those away about half an hour before bed. If you can, you know, life happens, but trying to make that a priority, um, and minimizing, you know, that blue light exposure if we can, and also to help just bring us down, find some calm right before bed. Next up, we want to dial that nutrition, make it A plus, and then really hydrate. If you like to track your water, you want to shoot for about half your weight in ounces um, every single day, maybe more, you know, if you're really hot outside, you're spending a lot of time out, then you want to just hit that a little bit more, but having lots of water, you know, it's what our body's predominantly made of. If you don't have enough water, we can't flush out the bad stuff. So that's where just staying constant on that hydration is super important. And finally, you want to just chill. Um, you know, a lot of our life we spend super alert, super what's next, what's next, what's next. And so we have to find ways, and this is personal for everyone, to kind of just find that sort of happy place, um, whether for you it's meditating, um, doing yoga for like me personally, it's hanging out in my hammock in my backyard and reading a book. Um, so that's going to be different for everyone, but finding, you know, your 20 to 30 minutes, even if it's once a week, ideally every single day where we can get out of that super alert state into a much more relaxed state is going to help us recharge our batteries, enter the next work workout, um, fully charged. Now habit maintenance, why are forming new habits so stinking hard? So let's just chat about habits real fast. If you guys want to look at this bottom picture. So habits are always insta instigated and implemented when, so we see a cue, then we follow our routine and then you find your reward. So for example, um, you're working on hydrating, you would download an app and it alerts, you know, Hey, you need to drink water. That's your cue. Your routine is you go and drink water, your reward. Maybe the app gives you a good job, something like that. So this can work really well for good habits as well as bad habits. Now, when we go to change habits, we actually have to literally rewire our brain. So when we are choosing to make a behavior that comes from our prefrontal cortex. So that's what we have to actively think about. These things are new. We have to be like, okay, I am going to go and do this. However, habits live in our basal amygdala. So things like driving, things we don't really have to think about, we're very, very well rehearsed in, um, are in that basal amygdala. So you've got your prefrontal cortex is up top and your basal amygdala is actually down below. So this is the more primitive part of our brain. It's going to house emotions, memories. It's going to recognize patterns. So basically what you have to do when you're making a new habit is you have to have such strong desire and decision-making to go in and rewire this more primitive part of your brain. So the biggest tie for making new habits is going to be emotions. Emotions are our gateway to everything. And I think we've all had those moments where we're emotional and we maybe do something that we're like, why did I do that? It doesn't quite make sense, but it's just primitive. It's kind of how we're hardwired. So we got to go in and change that. So how can we do this? What are some ways that we can hack our system? So first and foremost, we have to identify our cues for old habits. Then we have to go and create a cue for the new habit while still eliminating that old cue. So to go back to our water example, um, you know, that old habit is maybe you just wouldn't drink water all day because you just don't think about it. Our new cue is having that app on our phone. Our behavior is then in our routine is going to drink the water. And then our reward is, oh, I'm thinking clear or that app gives us a good job to get some external feedback. So phone reminders are awesome, whether it's for signing up for your gym, going on your walks, drinking more water. Um, but it can also be as simple as 
I'm going to leave my lacrosse ball on my desk. So I remember whenever I feel tight to go do soft tissue work, you know, it doesn't have to be huge changes, but if you can go around and change your environment to be more conducive to your new habit, you'll be less likely to fall into that old one. And then the other thing we want to do a little more long-term um, is to set smart goals. Smart goals are things that are specific measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. So I think we've all probably heard about SMART goals maybe at work or at school, um, but really this is a great way to eat the elephant a little bite at a time. Um, you know, if we go about making huge lifestyle changes, we're kind of setting ourselves up to fail because there's too many things to do at once. So we've got to break it down, go step by step by step by step. You don't go from a baby laying on your back to walking right away. You crawl, you sit up, you know, you've got your little steps in between. So really make sure we set these SMART goals one at a time and put it somewhere where you're going to see it and you're going to remember it um, if you're someone who gets a little bit distracted or has a lot of things going on. Write it down, put it in a place where you can see it. And, you know, maybe it's something as small as a post-it note on your computer. It doesn't have to be anything big, but just keep it front of mind and only have one at a time. All right. So let's get some perspective. We've gone really micro. Let's buzz up, um, get a 10,000 foot view for all of this. So in this challenge, I'm sure you guys have made some awesome, awesome lifestyle changes. So we want to do a little check-in, you know, how sustainable are these? Um, and sort of big question here is what lifestyle and schedule makes you feel great? Schedule, we don't always have the most control of, you know, we've got to be at work at a certain time. You've got kids, maybe their schedules are fluctuating all the time. Heck, with COVID, everyone's like, am I going to school this week <laughs> or not? Um, so while that schedule we can't always control, how can we make our environment as conducive to making us feel as fulfilled and great as possible so we have the most energy to conquer whatever schedule stressors we have? So that's a little like reflection for you. Um, and it's going to be a work in progress. It's never going to be perfect, um, but just finding ways that it's small things, it's just little things in life um, that make you feel really good. And so with that and with your schedule and your lifestyle currently, you know, what fitness and nutrition can fit with your goals and your schedule? You know, you might not always be able to come to the gym an hour and a half, four times a week, you know, it just for life happens, things change. Um, so we've got to be flexible in that. But then just being realistic with yourself, of, okay, this is something I can attain right now and this is what fits. So I'm going to get started and I'm going to do it. Now, the other thing is we really have to do stuff that makes us happy. Um, the biggest thing, not everyone is an exerciser. I would love to have every single one of you in rally classes like four times a week because I love the energy. I love seeing your faces. I love seeing your all's personal accomplishments but that's not everyone. Not everyone's a weightlifter. Not everyone feels really good after weightlifting. So the biggest thing with fitness and nutrition is find what makes you happy and find what works for you. So if for you, your fitness and your activity is going hiking three to four times a week, you go surfing, just get up, get moving and do something that makes you feel good. And our coaches are here to help you with that as well. If you're looking to do some experimenting. So a really, really good sign that things are sustainable is what can you return to after a break? You know, maybe you get sick and you're just kind of getting back in the swing of things as you feel better. You go on vacation. Um, what lifestyle can you return to and what do you kind of find that you miss once you have that break is a really, really good sign you've made some awesome changes that are going to last you through the long term. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I think we do need to be realistic and you're going to fail. I will fail. We are human. Things are going to go wrong and they're not going to go how we want. But, 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 but that does not mean it is the end of the world. We just have to choose how we're going to handle it. You know, we've got to try again. We've got to get up. You guys are so strong. You've been able to do such an awesome job through this challenge. So if after this challenge, you find that you're having a really, really hard time, you have active choice in how you handle that failure. You can either go forward and learn from it, or you can be sad, take that time, but then just learn something and progress forward again, no matter what, get up and try again. If you're having a hard time, again, our coaches are here. We've all been through failures. We've all been through hard times and we want to help you guys get back to that lifestyle that you guys are feeling great about. 
So this kind of just to wrap everything up, you know, be flexible. Your life and your body changes um, through the years. Things happen, injuries happen, you get married, you have kids, things are so exciting, but that is gonna impact your fitness and nutrition. So your ARE wellness team is here to help guide you through those changes. Reach out to us, we are always available. So what's next after this challenge? First up, you guys need to sign up for your follow-up consultations March 15th through the 26th. This is where we'll do some reassessment, remeasuring, things like that. Then I want you guys to maintain one habit from the challenge. Now, you may have started two or three. That's amazing. You are an overachiever, gold star. But if you guys can just maintain one moving forward, ideally for like six months, maybe, you know, you kind of grow on that for like one or two and then grow a little bit more. Um, maintaining just one habit is an awesome place to start. Finally, please, please, please stay in touch with your coaches. We are here for you. We are here to be your cheerleaders. So if you guys need new exercise programs, any of us are happy to write six, eight, or 10 week programs tailored to your movement and your goals. And then with that, you know, we'll probably get into some nutrition and lifestyle goal setting, just like we did with this challenge. Um, we're here to keep you accountable. We're here to keep things modified. And then finally, we have all of our wonderful classes, open fitness, our virtual rally classes. There's uh, virtual yoga as well. And then we also have UJM spin classes, Pilates classes, and so much more in person. So I hope you guys have had a wonderful time through this challenge, learned something about yourself, made an awesome change, and have gotten to know your ARE wellness team a little bit better because we are here for you guys. All right. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to email me at mary.shook at teamexos.com. So proud of all of you guys and keep going forward and crushing it.